Well, I got a quick winch troubleshooting video here. Now, just a quick backstory. Last night I went up and rescued a friend of mine whose truck quit while he was out in the woods. Um, he ended up having a charging system failure. Didn't want to leave the truck out there to go get parts, so took my flatbed out, winched him up on the trailer, and then uh, towed his truck in to uh, go do some repairs on it. The winch worked okay for the pull, but it was very down on power, and uh, when I got the rear tires just barely up on the trailer, the winch quit altogether. And so this is what we got now. This is a Warren M12, so a 12,000 pound winch. You can still hear the solenoids clicking, but the motor doesn't move in either direction. So we're gonna troubleshoot this real quick, figure out what's going on. Uh, electrically, a winch is pretty simple. There's a few solenoids up in here. Uh, sometimes they're combined together into a contactor assembly. This one is just solenoids. Uh, and then the motor itself, of course. These motors have brushes inside of them. And my experience is, uh, if you got an electrical failure, it's either one of the solenoids or the brushes are stuck in the motor. That's really pretty much it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna check for voltage on both the armature and the field windings here. Uh, if we've got that, then it's probably a problem with the motor itself. So uh, let's figure this out. I got my voltmeter right here. That's 12 volts on the armature. Twelve volts on the field winding. Yeah. All right. We're gonna troubleshoot this mechanically. I'm gonna just tap the in bell of the motor with the winch control pushed down, and I'm betting that it's just got a sticky brush. As soon as I tap it, I bet the motor's gonna start working. almost nothing. Yeah, I'd say definitely sticky brushes are the culprit here. Now, this motor is not a genuine worn motor. This is one that I bought. Uh, the original worn motor had failed on this and I bought this. I think the company is DB Electrical from Amazon. Uh, I've never been happy with this motor. It's way down on power for whatever reason the, the way that the motor is designed the timing the the um, Placement of the uh, Stator coils in there. I, I don't know, but uh, anyway, I've never been happy with it uh, It's time for me I think to just retire that motor altogether and buy a replacement worn one Yeah. Uh, check out the commutator here. It is like all one piece. Yeah. Also, if you look back in the end cap here, all the brushes are stuck. None of them, they're, they're supposed to be spring loaded. They're supposed to be up against the, uh, the commutator, but they're not. So. We'll pull this thing out of here, but uh, yeah, this thing is done. Well, it took me a minute to wrangle this bearing out of here, but yeah, this is it. You know, this winch sits out on my trailer all the time, but I do have a cover for it. So it, the motor and everything is under cover, but um, you know, the rotor itself looks fine. It's that commutator. I think probably what happened is one brush got stuck in there and high amounts of current were flowing through there. It was heating up and yeah, I'm not even gonna try and fix this. I could probably unstick these brushes, but like I said, I've never really been happy with this motor anyway, so I'm just gonna pony up the extra 150 bucks and get a genuine worn one. So we'll check back in with you here in a week or two when the new motor shows up. Well, fast forward a week, I got myself a new winch motor. 
Genuine Worn, part number 77505. Really, the install is pretty easy. It's just a couple of bolts, and I got to line up the splined coupler here. Um, you know, this failure is this is the third motor I think I've put on this winch. Uh, I mean, the, these winches just aren't waterproof, and I live in the Pacific Northwest. It's always wet here, even though this winch is under a cover, it's just damp. And I got to thinking about it. I actually, one of my friends gave me this idea. Uh, he said, hey, why not put a hydraulic winch motor on here instead of the electric one? Because that'll never fail due to moisture intrusion. And unfortunately, I'd already ordered this winch motor, and uh, I'm not going to return it. But, you know, this is a hydraulic tilt deck trailer. Uh, I've got some hydraulic lines going back there. I've got a hydraulic power pack here inside the toolbox right here. So there's no reason why I couldn't put a diverter on that and uh, run a couple of extra lines out there <clears throat> and then just click the diverter on and uh, I use the pendant control then to run the winch in and out. So I actually really like that idea. I wish I'd have thought of it earlier, but I didn't. So I think what I'm going to do is I'll put this electric winch motor on here and the next time it fails, I'm going to do the hydraulic conversion. A hydraulic motor is definitely going to be cheaper than the electric winch motor is. However, I'm going to have to buy lines and that diverter valves. So that swap will actually cost more than just putting another electric motor on there, but it'll be the last time that I do it. So anyway, enough of that. Let's put this motor on. I'm gonna add one more little project or one little detail to this project. Uh, this solenoid pack right here has this factory link battery cables. I've got this 200 amp power plug on it. The problem is these cables are too short when the deck is fully extended. And if I'm being honest, half the time I forget to disconnect the winch. And then when the deck goes up, I'm straining this cable and it pops it off there. So I've made up this extension cable. The problem with the extension cable is, like I said, half the time I forget to use it. And then those connectors are kind of finicky. I mean, they're they're capable of passing a few hundred amps, but especially they, they get a little corroded and everything, and then I gotta clean them up. And if I can eliminate one pair of them, that would be great. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm actually just gonna put some ring terminals on the ends of this cable right here, hook them up to the solenoids in here, and that should be long enough to run right to my plug on the battery box up there.
All right, that is way better. Let Genuine Worn Motor works way better than that aftermarket one that was on there before. So probably should have just ponied up the extra 100 bucks last time I did this swap, but it's all back together. Battery's charging in the box. This trailer's ready to be back in service for doing some more vehicle rescues. Well, thanks for watching, guys. Hope you found the video useful, and we'll catch you on the next one.